As we've seen, in the race to grab more water in this historic drought, there are winners and losers. If you have the cash to dig a deeper well, you get access to water. But what happens when you can't afford it? So we're just about to meet a family that lives in Tulare County. They haven't been able to fix their wells, and we're gonna get a better understanding of what it's like when you can't turn on your faucet. I remember when we first ran out of water, it was kind of a scary experience because you're thinking like, how are we gonna eat, how are we gonna bathe? Right here, this is one of the buckets we used to use, actually. We'd fill the bucket maybe about halfway, sometimes a little less. We'd get a disposable cup and try and rinse yourself off super well. It was definitely embarrassing sometimes to like have visitors over when the drought first started and be able to tell them, like, sorry, we can't give you any water because we didn't have any. On top of the pressures of rationing water, Manuel's family was facing another challenge. My father doesn't work. He has colon cancer, so he has to clean himself up often because he has a colostomy bag. He'd have to go off to shower somewhere else because he can get sick easily. Could your family just drill a deeper well? My mother's the only one that works in our home, and it's something that's not possible, not just for us, but just for many families that are here in these areas. I'm afraid we're racing into a future where water is becoming a commodity. We're losing the idea that water is a public good. Water for basic human needs and sanitation should be available to everyone equitably at low cost. Luckily for Manuel and his family, a nonprofit has come to the rescue. They've received a tank that supplies the house with non potable water. It took us at least, I think, six months to get this. If Americans don't wise up and start saving water, they can look forward to one of these in their homes, yeah? Oh, definitely. This is what's actually drinkable. Inside each of these crates is um, six one-gallon water bottles that we use. Does your family have to regulate how much you guys can drink? Yeah. The scariest part is literally knowing that we have maybe 20 or 30 cases out there, and that's all we have. This is the wake-up call for everybody. The only solution that we can see of right now is just conserving water, shortening showers, we used to have a little garden out back. We've had to give up little hobbies like that. I talked to a couple of my friends that live like deeper in the city, and they're still, still taking these long showers, and I'm thinking to myself, there's families out here that have absolutely nothing. Based on how some of these people are acting, watering their lawns, running their sprinklers, or just going and playing golf, it's almost as if they don't even know what's happening. If they don't fix their habits, it could eventually affect them. We don't know how long the drought's gonna last, but the ideas behind smart, sustainable water management and use are universal. When there's not enough water to go around, the things that ought to go first are the luxuries, the lawns, the, the pools, the bottled water. Those by themselves won't solve the shortages of water that California faces, but until we take problems like the drought more seriously, we're gonna continue to have unresolved water challenges. Regardless of whether you're on the city water or you're on a well, there is a terrible situation happening right now and we're not thinking about future generations and how they're going to live. There are other people that are going to be residing on this earth that have to use this for many years to come. Out of necessity, Manuel has become a conservationist. It's absolutely the future for all of us if we can't start heading down a path that leads to a more sustainable future.